So, hello, my name is Mikola, and today I would like to share my Kafka experience. Actually, it's more about transferring uh, big records to Visit Kafka. So, uh, I'm expecting like a short presentation and uh, demo is end. I have prepared the code base already uh, working with one deployment script, so it will be easy for us just to pull the uh, GitHub code and uh, start, try to experiment with all the stuff. So, regarding agenda for today, it consists of two main parts. First of all, I would like to describe a little bit uh, uh, Kafka. In general, I don't know who is familiar with it or not, but uh, first part would be like uh, some intro. And the second part actually would be transferring uh, records with the Kafka and approaches, and then with them, definitely. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so in general, so what is a Kafka? Kafka is actually a message broker. So the main goal of each message broker is to uh, transfer data, correct? Transfer record messages. So Kafka, uh, Kafka used actually by people who want like to, to follow uh, event-driven application approach, like if you have multiple uh, services, if your application consists of multiple services, yeah, and you want like to have your services com communicate with, with each other, as there are multiple approach, like use uh, REST APIs, uh, and socket connection, or you may choose a message broker. It's actually a really good way to uh, uh, to transfer some messages, events, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Kafka is a message broker, and uh, actually there are multiple brokers like Apache MQ, uh, I guess RabbitMQ, etc. So why Kafka? Well, because uh, first of all, I'm working with Kafka. Uh, then Kafka is really powerful. It uh, is of couple parts like uh, all APIs can be split on producer APIs, uh, consumer, stream, and uh, connectors. So here in this presentation, I uh, uh, going to uh, discuss producer and consumer APIs. So uh, regarding producer APIs, so producer is a uh, with producer we the main goal of producer actually is to send data. So, uh, if you are talking about the Kafka to create producer, to create producer is a really uh, simple uh, task. So, everything what we need is to first of all create the uh, config config with the Kafka details, like uh, specify the server broker server uh, IP and port. Also, set the producer name and one of the uh, most important parts is to specify the serializer. So why serializer? Because with Kafka, you may transfer any kind of data. So it doesn't matter if you have, we are talking here uh, from the Java perspective. So if you have any primitives, you may use uh, primitive types. Uh, if you uh, want to transfer like your custom objects, it's not a problem. So uh, Kafka work, works with uh, bytes. So everything what Kafka needs actually is to uh, is some uh, mechanism how to let's say transform your custom type into bytes. And this is what calls the serializer. Well, yeah, it's uh, if you're talking in Java, so serializer Kafka serializer is really similar what uh, what is Java serializer. Well, the idea is the same. We have a uh, custom type and we need to transform into the byte array. So uh, just creating this object, then passing this configs to the new Kafka uh, producer, uh, and, the, and that's it actually, guys. So this is all what we have to write to have the working Kafka producer. Uh, now regarding uh, sending data, sending data, yeah. So, in order to send any message, we have to wrap it into the uh, producer record object. So you can send the like uh, byte array or your uh, like uh, or your any custom type just put in directly to the send method message. You have to wrap it into the uh, 
police record uh, object. So police rem, record object actually, uh, you also should specify such important information as topic. So this is a topic where you message should go. Uh, petition, here we're using default petition, but you are able, uh, you, you can use any like petitions. Because Kafka allows you to like, uh, to work, uh, like to, to scale uh, consumer, uh, consuming records. So this is why we need a petition. But in our example, we're going to use a default petition. So, and then uh, we have to put the police record key. Key, this is an identifier of our record. Then value, this champ value, yeah, this is uh, our value which we want to transfer. And the last one uh, is a header. Uh, record header is actually um, uh, some list of uh, key, value, key values which you want to associate with the record. It's just a main record properties. So the main information goes into the value and the, some additional uh, additional details you may uh, put to the header and send to the record. Well, that's it regarding produce. Now let's go to the consumer, guys, and uh, creating consumer, the same is a straightforward way. Uh, what we need is to create the configs to specify uh, broker, Kafka broker uh, uh, address, also uh, ID of this consumer, and the same, deserializer. So the same concept as for serializer, but just vice versa. Here uh, we have to know uh, Kafka consumer how to convert a byte race into other objects. That's it. So this is a this serializer. Uh, the concept is similar to the Java serializer deserializer. And pass this configs to the Kafka consumer. So we have the. After that, we have the Kafka consumer. And one more important thing we have to do is to subscribe consumer to the topic. Because um, there, are, there could be multiple topics and uh, we, we have to know our consumer which topic it should be. Uh, so doing that, we just calling subscribe message uh, on the Kafka consumer and specifying the topic. By the way, we can specify multiple topics, so it's not a big deal. So if you have like, uh, if you have data uh, split, uh, spread in multiple topics, just uh, specify all topics and Kafka consumer will take care about the rest and will uh, provide you the data. Uh, one more thing, one more important thing. So there are two ways uh, to, let's say, to subscribe to topic. First, the subscribe method and then the assign. So there is a difference. So remember, I uh, told you that uh, Kafka is good uh, for like big amount of data, and it's easy to scale applications, especially Kafka consumers, just to have like multiple consumers subscribed on the same topic and process data in parallel. So if we want like to do that, then we have to use a subscribe method. For subscribe method, uh, we are putting only the topic. In the subscribe method. In case of assign, we are also put in the topic plus uh, petition we would like to uh, to join. And for the pooling method, so everything what is needed just to execute pool method with the duration. Duration is a uh, time, any time you want. So how it works? So in my case, I have a 100 milliseconds specified. So uh, if there is uh, if there are no records during uh, this time, Kafka returns the uh, consumer records with zero objects. If there are any records uh, like uh, appeared in the topic during the time, so Kafka returns the times. And a little bit about the uh, consumer record. So here uh, we, uh, by calling a pool method with the time, we are receiving the consumer records object. We con we contain the list of consumer uh, record, and then uh, after iterating the consumer record, we can get the all, all needed values by calling record dot key. This means that we are uh, returning a records key value headers etc etc etc. 
also we are able to get information about the topic, partition of set of sets. This is like the number of records in the queue, sequential number. And one more important thing that Kafka uh, uh, writes the records uh, in a specific order. So when you are like sending uh, multiple records, like you are sending the uh, two records and uh, first records goes first the Kafka and then the second record. So in the same order, we will receive on the other end, on the consumer end. So the, we are we will receive the first record, which was like uh, submit first. Okay, so actually it's all about uh, like uh, Kafka consuming producing. And now let's talk a little bit about the transform records. So actually there is no any constraint like uh, about the record size. So Kafka can handle any types of rec any type of records, uh, any size of records. So there is no like uh, constraint that you cannot transfer one gigabyte file or one gigabyte uh, record memory. The only one thing is that uh, there is some configs, and when you start the Kafka cluster, uh, Kafka server, uh, like there is a default limitations. So one of the default limitations is the one uh, Kafka record threshold is about one megabyte. So what, what does it mean? It means that when you will try to uh, push a record which uh, less than one megabyte with default permissions, everything uh, will be fine. Message uh, would be pushed to the topic and then consumer can easily uh, have, have it. But what happens when you try like to uh, push a record, let's say 10 megabytes? Well, uh, most probably you will get the record large exception. So what does it mean? It means that Kafka actually expecting uh, process records less than some threshold, you know, in my case one megabyte, and you are trying like to put the record bigger than it. So Kafka just rejected. So you will see this uh, uh, exception and the no message uh, will be sent to the topic itself. So is it the main question. So is it a way like to send the big records? Definitely the answer is yes. And there are a couple of them. And let's start with the easiest one. Uh, several limitation and conflicts. So the easiest way to overcome this exception actually to tune Kafka server conflicts uh, to be able to accept big records. Like there are multiple configs, so I put here only the major, uh, but uh, in the real case, there are much more configs uh, which are topic related, etc. Here, just uh, for your understanding, there are like we have in order to send the records big, bigger than some default Kafka threshold, we have to uh, update three places. First of all, Kafka a cluster or Kafka server itself, it's a broker. We are calling that. Yeah, so how we have to uh, set the uh, message max bytes, uh, replica max bytes, and uh, max message bytes, like all these three properties, by allowing uh, Kafka cluster to accept uh, like bigger like bigger records, and definitely we have to uh, uh, update the. To do appropriate changes on the consumer and, and producer side. So, uh, even in case we update first the properties, uh, we have uh, our producer, and our producer just will reject sending records which exceeded uh, threshold. So, in such case, we have to excuse me. We have to uh, set the uh, property on the producer side. So, wh where to set it? Actually, uh, we what is needed actually to add uh, this uh, property with the appropriate value to the config map, which we are passing to the consumer. That's all. The same should be done on the consumer. So the way is really uh, the way to uh, solve uh, this issue with sending like uh, bigger file files is really easy. But so 
for example, case, well, in general, Kafka is used to send a small record, like to, to communicate uh, uh, service communication, some, some, send some events, bytes, kilobytes, no more. But uh, let, let us in case, and we sometimes we want to send 10, 10 megabytes file, yeah. So definitely, uh, we have to update the several limitations, uh, several configs, producer and consumer. So okay, we done it, everything fine. So 10 megabytes record successfully transferred, so no concerns here. But what's happened if uh, in some future we, we are assuming that uh, we want to transfer like file which will greater than 10 megabytes? Updating several configs? Well, yes, probably, yes. But you see, we can update several configs multiple times. So some of you may say, hey, why not just to put the configs accepting like one gigabyte file? So what's bad? Well, there is nothing bad, but you see, uh, there is some, uh, if we uh, put one gigabyte threshold, we would definitely impact some performance because uh, Kafka to process all these records and transferring Kafka use some meta information. So bigger file we transfer, uh, like more uh, overhead. Uh, Kafka uh, as a adds like more overhead for this thing. So if like we mostly ninety nine nine percent we are transferring uh, like some events. And uh, once per I don't know week we are transferring big file, so setting like updating this config to uh, to allow it transfer one gigabyte file it's like it's not a best solution because we we impact the performance in general. So is there a way to overcome it? Yes. Uh, the next actually approach is a chunk approach. So idea is a C4. We have a big message just to uh, split it to the chunks, send chunk one by one, and that's it, and, and that's it. Actually, Kafka uh, keeps the order, so nothing more about it. Uh, definitely, this solution requires some code changes, because first solution just uh, updating config that's it. This one requires uh, code changes on the both producer and consumer side. So on the producer side, we have like to take this big message, split in, into chunks, uh, assign uh, some uh, current chunk ID and uh, total chunks, or as, at least a flag if this is the last chunk for the record. Also, didn't forget to assign some uh, original record ID because we uh, multiple records could be uh, split on the chunks. So we will, on the consumer side, we will be receiving the chunks, and we definitely have to know uh, whether this chunk belong, which chunk belong to which message, like original message. Uh, so on consumer side, we definitely have to implement the logic to uh, pull these chunks, uh, track the current chunk and total chunk number, uh, track uh, which chunk belong to which uh, message, and uh, glue all these pieces after we receive uh, the last chunk into the entire message and voila. Uh, so it's like implementing this uh, splitting and uh, joining, it's not a big deal actually. Definitely there are some constraints you may uh, find, but it's not a big deal. Uh, there is another case. Uh, so Kafka is really powerful tool, uh, and uh, if you compare with other message brokers, Kafka keeps the uh, records, and uh, Kafka works together with Zookeeper, which uh, and uh, all records actually are saved on the uh, file system. So this is a big Kafka advantage. So when you want just to uh, read record one more time. Some record which, which, which was already processed, you can easily do that. Uh, in comparison with, with other message uh, brokers, so after you receive the message, that's all. Uh, you you can't like read this message one more time because 
messages deleted from the queue or topic. But Kafka allows us to uh, return to the message. But as a side of this scenario, actually, uh, Kafka and the Keeper require some file system to like to keep all these records. So if you're talking about the chunk approach, yes, it works perfect with the chunks. We don't need to conf con configure a server uh, or start it in any way, but uh, the amount of records increased and uh, definitely we have to maintain some file system like uh, sometimes uh, even one couple terabytes is not enough when you have a big like uh, amount of records and the record size is out big so this approach is really good but has all uh, minus so let's go further and our next approach cross approach so cross it actually stands for cloud object storage. So the approach is the following. Uh, when we want to transfer some big, huge file, we actually not sending, uh, sending it through the Kafka. We are storing it to the cloud storage and we are uh, putting in the Kafka record only link or pointer to upload that file on the cloud object storage. Then, oh my God, I have, <laughs> mistake here the producer and in the end should be consumer so on pro on producer side we are uh, we have to implement logic to uh, upload file to the cloud object storage create the record and instead of uh, record content we are just putting the link link uh, to the object on the cloud storage and after on consumer side here is the bottom when we receive the record definitely we have to parse the record uh, get the link and upload upload fi file uh, from the object storage so it's uh, no not a hard way to implement it actually uh, the yeah there's only a couple things I'd like to add it's about uh, for example we want to uh, send the record uh, to multiple uh, Kafka topics. So what is good here, so we need only upload record once on the cloud storage and then send the link to the record itself on the cloud storage for to multiple topics, to multiple destinations, that's all. So here we are uploading actual object once. This is a big advantage. Uh, then, I can say that disadvantage, but definitely to uh, implement this approach, we have to have the access to the cloud object storage and definitely it's an additional cost. But talking honestly, currently object storage, like space, uh, HG space is not costly. So uh, now we'll get uh, more about the transferring approach. Uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, here I'm using the IBM Cloud and the like to upload, uh, to upload the object, I'm using the AWS S3 Java SDK. So it's compatible with multiple clouds. So, uh, so what is needed actually to properly specify it? And uh, like to send download object, we need first of all to create the credential providers, simple object, then build the uh, Amazon S3 object, that creates the transfer manager. So, uh, by the way, why we're using the AWS S3 Java SDK? Because it's really powerful and it has such API called the transfer manager, which provides the asynchronous like uploads and downloads. You see, a transfer manager is a clever uh, APIs when we upload, when, when we try to uh, upload the download uh, uh, big object, it uses the multiple threads. And definitely, uh, it speed up uh, the loading, loading action. So now let's think about the question. So which approach is better? There is no straightfor straightforward answer because uh, for some cases, when we mostly receiving the like uh, records under the one megabyte and 
uh, we know that sometimes we can receive the record, let's say, two or three uh, megabytes, so, and uh, it's, not, it's, it's not impossible to receive the record uh, greater than three megabytes, so maybe definitely the easiest way to choose the first uh, approach, like to update the service config, configs once and forget about all this stuff. When we're using relatively big objects, I mean, uh, they are bigger definitely than megabytes, we are seeing it frequently, but they are not really huge. So maybe chunk approaches would be the best solution, you see? Because, uh, yeah, with chunk approach, we chunk approach, we don't need to like configure any server, we don't need to restart it. Definitely, we have to implement a uh, half uh, split record on chunks and uh, join chunks together. Uh, for some purposes, like uh, for some project to ban uh, big, really huge project uh, messages are transferred, so uh, cost approach would be the better solution. But definitely, even cost approach uh, has a disadvantage. So you, you definitely have uh, to have access to the some cost provider, it's additional cost. Set, et cetera, et cetera. So there are even clever way uh, by combining all, all three uh, approaches. Like it's, uh, it's not a like big deal to like introduce some uh, variables and set some thresholds. For example, if the record uh, less than one megabyte, then nothing is needed. If it uh, greater than one megabyte and till let's say 100 megabytes so we can use a chunk approach so if uh, bigger than I know 100 megabytes then use it tickers. Well actually that's it. Uh, I hear a couple of references. Uh, first one is a uh, Apache Kafka documentation, second one actually is a uh, SDK and the third one uh, project on my Bitbucket it's, uh, has a uh, public share so we can easily download it is a link so just uh, download it and here's its uh, instructions uh, how to set up and let's start demo okay let me switch to the IDE so let first of all, uh, I prepared the project by the, uh, using the single responsibility principle. So this is a multi-main project. And first, like cloud object storage, this is actually uh, uh, classes to uh, upload, download object to the cloud storage. It's just simple provider. What we need to specify is a, a cloud access and, and a secret key and actually because service here what i shown well, what was shown on the slide like creating provider creating amazon s3 based on provider and taking into account uh, cloud endpoint and uh, cloud region this is what we need for the bucket bucket is a place where we store our files and when we want to do download object creating the transfer manager, specifying all the stuff, specifying the bucket where the object and the key, the name of the object and the bucket. And using this uh, transfer manager, we are just simply calling the log method, waiting for completion here and voila. Voilà. So we have the object downloaded. The same actually for upload. So we can upload uh, some bytes in memory or file, it doesn't matter. Uh, the idea is the same, create transfer, Transfer manager prepares a object, uh, requires object uh, which contains the information uh, about the object to be uh, uploaded and call upload methods as in transfer manager. That's it. Now, a little bit about the producer. Yeah everything what you saw on the slide. So here is our Kafka producer, creating the 
uh, configs, like the sub server config, this is a broker uh, URL address. ID, uh, producer, identifier, identifier on the Kafka site, and our uh, serializer for key and for value. So uh, sending object is really simple. Just after we create our producer, we are calling send method and passing the constructed object. This object, uh, pr producer object, yeah. And one more thing that I, that I forgot to mention on the uh, beginning, that uh, there are two ways to uh, see whether this message was transferred successfully or not. First of all, a message sends returns the future object, and uh, here's a synchronous way. By getting, by, by executing get message, we receive the record metadata, and uh, metadata actually contain information about the topic, partition, offset. Offset, this is the number of the record in the topic. So this offset is unique. So when we start in the topic, uh, first record will have the offset uh, equal to one, the second to two, etc., etc., etc. So by knowing offset, we can easily uh, get any message from from the top. the first way, synchronous way. Maybe it's not good. I just showed you for the demo purposes, but I prefer as way callback service. So this is a simple callback, uh, and we are passing this callback uh, to the send message. And when uh, message is successfully completed, we can like do. Uh, like lo log uh, here, I'm lo just logging that uh, message was successfully uh, transferred to topic with such offset. If error occurs, then you can add here your logic uh, to handle that case. Uh, now about the Kafka consumer. Yeah, it's the same Kafka consumer config uh, with details, broker ID, config ID, deserializer for key, deserializer for value, passing config to the uh, Kafka object, and important thing, subscribing on the topic, or multiple topics. Here I'm using only one topic, so single from list is used. And regarding the pooling, yeah, uh, duration, one, you can specify even zero here, but pay attention on important thing. Then uh, if uh, you specify the zero, really small, then Kafka uh, will not wait uh, uh, for the message appears in the topic. And definitely uh, your CPU usage will be higher. Uh, so for some reason, just like when you want to put this duration time, time out, yeah, you, should think carefully about it. Uh, so specifying zero, like return your message immediately, but it definitely increases CPU usage. So after calling the pull message, we have the consumer records. And here, parsing consumer records, uh, like I have like three strategies uh, for handling uh, plain record. Just receive the record and print information for handling the chunk approach. Here, uh, implementation how to split the record onto chunks and transfer to the Kafka. And the last one, because uh, like to transfer uh, object uh, on the cloud object storage and receive the same uh, you handlers you will find on the producer side. So now let's do a demo. Uh, before demo, I uh, just want to say a couple words about the uh, deployment. So I prepare the shell scripts. So sorry, guys, who run Windows, but on Linux and Mac, uh, they are ready to use. So uh, to do, like, uh, to play with it, uh, we have, like, to first of all, uh, deploy Kafka. And uh, it's really easy just uh, download the zip file from the official site and unzip. You don't need to specify any uh, configs at all. You can use the default one. So by default, Kafka is running on the 1992 port. Just specify the Kafka server. This is a like producer consumer IDs. 
topics to use. Uh, if you would like to try the cloud access, uh, then definitely you have to have a keys. So it works perfectly on the AWS S3. And if you have such keys, so you may try it. And definitely uh, specify the endpoint region for AWS. Uh, it's not uh, mandatory. I'm, I'm using IBM Cloud, so and I'm using IBM Cloud and AWS is the case. That's why I have to uh, I have to put the endpoint region and the bucket. Bucket is the place where stored. Definitely, we have to use the local storage because uh, unless you did uh, when you when the application upload uh, anything from the uh, from the uh, cloud object storage, you can save it onto memory. But it's not a good idea in case you are expecting one one gigabyte file. So you can imagine how much memory you need, like to keep. As a file is a memory, it's not only about the one gigabyte, so it could be like a couple gigabytes file. So, here, where the all records from the cloud object storage are kept, and this is details uh, to automate my script. So, first of all, let's uh, take a look on the files. Here, I have I, I prepared like three files. First one, small record, it's about 12. Uh, megabyte 12 uh, bytes yeah well, let me show you the content a little bit so just a small record text that's all uh, the next one uh, is a chunk it's a uh, about uh, chunk pro it's a file uh, i'm going to use to demonstrate ch uh, how chunks works it's about 200 kilobytes and the last one 88 megabytes about cross, so I could choose a even gigabyte file. It's not a big deal, but you see, transferring gigabyte files uh, like takes some time. So it depends on the network. So I took the. This is just auto-generated files. Okay, now let's do a try. Uh, let me start. Uh, right. It's all scripts prepared by me. So just to start Kafka. What I need is just to execute proper script. So I develop this script for you guys so we can easily just uh, don't forget to update the environment just to put the proper passes uh, where Kafka uh, lies. So uh, Kafka is up and running. Let's start the. Uh -huh. Here is the consumer cases. So three cases to uh, consume. Uh, plain text like uh, to consume like chunks and to consume keepers objects. So let's start with, with the first one, simple. And also let me uh, say, let me increase. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let, let let's start consumer first. And my consumer start consumer. So consumer is. Starting. Pay attention uh, information about the topic uh, to subscribe, this topic plane. Now let's go and uh, send the something to producer. Yeah, so here we are starting this small record. I apologize. So uh, I have I had something in the queue. <laughs> ah no, uh, uh, this is a number of uh, records I would like to send. This is just for demonstrators demonstration. So here I'm sending ten, ten records. First, second, and I guess yeah, the first one starting with zero. And this is the topic uh, where we send the record offset. Uh, excuse me, uh, not offset the partition and offset. Now let's go to the consumer. And here we can see the information about the records. Like we receive the record from the topic with partition, with offset, uh, key value, like this one. Partition zero, set three is a circle center. Well, pretty easy. Let's go then and try and try other scenario. Try scenario with the uh, chunks. 
Zoomer. Maybe chance. So here we are sending only one record. And uh, it's about 200, uh, 200 uh, kilobytes. So currently I have hard coded value. I don't, I don't remember like 50, uh, like a split uh, on chunks each 50 kilobytes, like uh, 50 kilobytes each chunk. So let, let me clear everything. And yeah, who was it? Producer, consumer. Yeah, so let's, yeah, I have uncommented it. Let me save it. Let's start the same. Consumer. Yeah. Okay, thanks. This is another topic. Topic chunks. It's the name just the topic. And let us submit. Start. Uh, yeah. So here are starting and pay attention to this information we ask, we send only one record and here is information for the chunk. So first chunks goes to, uh, to the uh, first chunk goes to this topic, topic chunks with uh, partition zero offset zero, is the next one offset one, offset three. Let's go to the uh, consumer and check. Ah, okay, so yeah, it's already, yeah, this record is big, so I <laughs> printed it. Yeah, this one, yeah. Let's call it. Yeah, and we receive the topic as a symbol. You see, the, we here uh, on the consumer side, uh, we uh, join all chunks together and uh, printed the entire topic. Yeah, it's partitioned with a set, with name, and this is the value. Yeah, it's a big value. Yeah, and here also pretty information about the hidden key values. I don't have anything so no information is here and now let's go and try last one uh, let's submit something bigger <laughs> let me update yep. so let me clean everything consumer and producer and before we start yeah let's clean also this one uh let's go to the storage I'm using this one and let me refresh it so as you can see no objects are here and let's go back and yeah we are going to transfer this one because record with 88 megabytes so let's let's do that. Ah, don't need console. I have everything here. So let's start the consumer. Uh, produce. Yeah. Start produce. Okay. So it takes a while. I know how much time. I I take megabytes. Well, maybe a uh, half minute. And let's in let's also start the consumer. First of all, we have like to see here if the record is appeared. So uh, this just shows the uh, like sh shows the row after the record fully transferred. Okay, so let's wait. So record is here. The name is different because I'm uh, I'm using the uh, I'm using the uh, key uh, like like as unique name for the record, and our record is here, 88 megabytes. Now let's go to the excuse me, uh, let's go to the consumer and see. Yeah, uh, consumer actually downloaded the object, and this is where object is. Let me copy the pass and go it. Yep, it's our object with the key name with the same size. This one we transferred and this one we received. Uh, well, it's pretty old. And yeah, that's it. So just waiting for your questions. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, 
in the end, you may find the instructions. Like instructions how to install Kafka. Pretty easy, just download zip and app stack, that's all. Uh, also pass uh, to my uh, good bucket repository with the entire project. And do not forget to like uh, update the environment file uh, to like specify uh, real values uh, in order to have everything, uh, every, uh, to, in order to have everything properly configured. And you may easily try these approaches to calling shell scripts or co uh, executing the uh, code directly from the idea or Eclipse, doesn't matter. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mikola. I have a, a question to you regarding um, cloud object storage and usage of that. Do you, I mean, you probably use that uh, on, your pro on your project, right? So the yeah. question is, uh, what's the common practice on cleaning up this cloud object storage after you, you know, have passed the object? Good, Do you yeah. just have a retention policy or Yeah, anything? correct. So, uh, good question. So I don't think it makes sense to like, uh, to add some lo logic to clean the objects. Uh, so you see cloud object storage is not, not something which is limited in the space. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the best approach uh, we, are got, we, we are using actually is retention policy. Because uh, you may definitely clean the object after, it, after you receive it, but what if, uh, what if uh, you want like, to uh, get this object for some other service? So definitely you have to specify some time that object live in the cloud object storage. So the better approach which I see and this is the best practice is to use a retention policy. Well, it depends on how much time do you want that file uh, keep alive. But retention policy on, on our project we are using like 30 days. For some projects, uh, services uh, like uh, uh, we have like uh, one week policy. For others, we even have like one day. So just upload the mod for multiple services and remove it from the storage. But yeah, retention policy would be the best case. I see, thank you. I have a question uh, regarding maybe, you know, if it's possible to configure something similar with using of uh, Spring Kafka. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely it's, uh, <laughs> Spring has a, a really cool Kafka support, and uh, I here I'm, <laughs> I use a plain Java because uh, maybe not, not all of you familiar with uh, Spring Boot, uh, and I just wanted to show how it's easy, like even using the plain uh, Java without any frameworks, which uh, helps our uh, like which uh, improve our life, our coding life, yeah, much. So. It's really easy. So everything what you need, uh, you actually uh, may uh, reuse this code and uh, just maybe re replace uh, this main class with a Spring Boot and uh, mark the producer as a service with service annotation. I don't know. Well, th th at least the. You may reuse most of my code and slightly update, uh, like uh, put the Spring Boot annotations to that list. But yeah, Spring Boot has a cool uh, integration with Java. Even <laughs> you need to write less code uh, as an unplanned Java to have it work. I'm just asking because, uh, as I know, I was trying to do some my pet project uh, with. Uh, Spring Kafka, but there were some restrictions. And with plain Java, then it's almost a year ago, uh, you could do much more than with uh, using this framework. Oh, well, you see, Yuri. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, yes, there are limitations, but I would rather say it's not limitations, it's a, a Spring, uh, like, behavior 
so you can you can implement on Spring everything uh, what you can do on plain Java. The only uh, like thing you have to follow the Spring conventions to just use the configs uh, annotation beams uh, like dependency injections, but if you, I guess I even have some uh, projects on the uh, uh, Kafka pet project with Spring, so you may reach me, and I, if I if I still have it on uh, on, on uh, GitHub or Bitbucket, I, I can share with you. So it's not big deal. Okay, thank you. And else. All right. Yeah, I have another question, if you, if you may. Um, so, uh, in the in the beginning of the presentation, you mentioned that we can subscribe. I think one consumer to many topics. Yeah, correct. Uh, can you please uh, describe and help me understand how that works? And can you only have you know been subscribed to uh, topics of same objects, or will it kind of differentiate and try to figure out well, what objects yeah. come in? Yeah. Okay. So I can even show you and describe in just a second. Let me open the consumer. Yeah, so in order to consume the like multiple topics, so everything you need is just to specify the topic name here. So and, and that's all. Yeah, really that's all. Definitely topics should have the similar data at, le at least similar type. So you are a developer and uh, you and, uh, you see you understand what you're doing correct so definitely you may put here like multiple is a list yeah so just uh, how extreme of topic one topic two correct list yeah, so this is not the case. Just you may specify here as many topics as you need and uh, Kafka subscribe on many topics and you will receive uh, topics records uh, asynchronously. But the other question, so uh, you are responsible uh, for, the, for, the, for the logic which parse uh, or processes data. So definitely topic one could help, let's say, uh, some entities, topic two, could have uh, like other kind of entities, but you see, from the logical perspective, it's not a good approach uh, like to mix everything. But yes, uh, there are no restrictions. You can do that. The only one thing, pay attention, that you are using a uh, decentralizer. So if you put like the, uh, like, for example, you want to transfer your object called cat, and topic one contains the cats, topic two contains the dogs. Here you have to specify a decentralizer, so you have to handle this case in some way, and it's really headache to to, to do that. Okay, you may do it in the other way, just to use the byte arrays. Here, how, how, uh, how I'm using this case. So definitely you will be receiving the byte arrays, but you as developer are responsible to handle the data, like convert them to the proper type. Best practice regarding best practices. So. Best practice says that uh, better to use uh, like topics with the same kind of data. So uh, it's, you are not restricted to, to use only one consumer in your application. You may use as many consumers, like creating many consumers, a, as you want. First one could work with the cats, another one with the dogs, uh, the other one with the other types of data. All right. So yeah, that can easily. Thank you. Um, maybe the follow-up of that one. So if like I see some object that I don't want to process, or I just can't process, can I reject the message, not acknowledge it? How uh, that work here? <laughs> uh, you see, Kafka doesn't work in a way like a message, uh, how it's called, yeah, rabbit in queue. Uh, so everything, there are a couple of ways. Uh, you can simply ignore that message. Definitely, first of all, you have to d d differentiate that message. So for this reason, you may use the header 
like uh, uh, keep some metadata about the object in the header and receive the record uh, based on the header. Um, based on the header, just filter it out. Or the other way, you can simply create uh, Kafka stream APIs. Uh, stream APIs are not covered in my presentation, and you may uh, construct filter condition. Uh, and uh, the idea is the following. You have the input topic with, uh, let's say, mix, mix of objects, and then based on that filter condition, some object uh, could go into the other Kafka topic, split that object across the multiple Kafka topics. So you have, you have one input topic, then you have the stream API uh, uh, service with the filter conditions. And after that, uh, the filter condition just simply forward uh, one type of data in one topic, another into the another topic. And in the end, you will have like two more topics. And here, just use the proper topic. Okay, so Kafka stream is the answer, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, you can, use, you can also, do it with the uh, consumer APIs, but uh, stream is faster. So if you're talking about some, like uh, stream APIs is similar to the consumer APIs, but it has own, uh, own restrictions. So it's a faster, but you can just uh, uh, like uh, start, uh, Kafka remembers stream state. And uh, after you uh, read the message number three, you cannot uh, change offset to read the, record one and two again. Uh, Kafka Sim doesn't allow it, but uh, consumer, if it's consumer, you can easily just uh, change your offset. So you have like 10 records in the queue and you want to start reading one more time from the record five. You can uh, change the offset for the topic and consumer uh, uh, will uh, get back and will start reading again message five, six, et cetera, et cetera. But with the filtering, so streams are better. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, I have another question. I was wondering, I didn't have a chance to work with headers uh, in Kafka. It's kind of a new feature. And I was wondering whether the deserializers and serializers that we define in consumer and pre producer configs are affecting headers or headers no. are expected to be by to race always. So, uh, the when we are talking about the serializer, the serializer, it's on, we are talking only about the value. So, Kafka header uh, consists of the key, uh, Kafka header key, key is all, always stream and the value always bytes. So, definitely you may, you see serialize any object and put uh, into the Kafka header uh, as a byte array. You are not restricted to do that. But uh, serializer, uh, this serializer or the serializer, which you specify for the consumer producer, affects only on the values itself. Okay, I see. And uh, when we decide, for example, for chunk approach, or not for chunk approach, for the one with cloud storage, uh, there's a necessity to store the key or some identifier for this uh, file that cloud storage assigned to it uh, in the message payload so that we can reference to it later. And I wonder whether there is any trade-off happening when we decide whether we want to store this information in headers without defining body at all, or in yeah, the body uh, of the message. I guess the question. Actually, in my current project, we we are we are not using the body. We are specifying the uh, information, the the pointer to the file on the cloud object storage in the header. So yeah, you you. Kafka allows you to send the record uh, without body. But what I remember, like there is a, it's not about the restriction. So I could be wrong, but what I remember from the Kafka documentation, Kafka could grab and remove such messages without body, considering them as an empty. But I could be wrong. But definitely uh, you can easily uh, use uh, like transfers information about the object in the header. I'm doing the same on my project with, with empty body. In my case, I just put in the empty array, uh, empty by array as a value. So I'm, I'm in safe and the like uh, additional, like it doesn't impact on the message size at all as it's simple empty array. Okay, so Kafka doesn't have any special handling for headers. Uh, well, 
Kafka doesn't help. You have to do it uh, in your code, like. So I, I right now have feeling that headers seem to be like a nice alternative for the situation when you need to represent some key value uh, state and attach that to your message while body is more suitable for the cases when you need to dump some unstructured data like just by array. Uh, and uh, the drawback I see that there is no support for deserializers, serializers, so it's like you always need to work with those bytes yourself and decide how you would like to extract information and write yeah. information, right? Correct, but you see, you, you may put uh, to the, like you, you may have a couple of headers, uh, Kafka headers with a byte array, but Kafka doesn't know what the bytes are. One like uh, one header could like be uh, one header value. Uh, I'm talking about the byte array. Yeah, could be like the cat object. Another one, the dog object. So you are not restricted to any like uh, of that. So Kafka can you see cannot uh, predict what that the bytes. So in terms of, of value, yes, Kafka can predict because uh, you are creating the uh, consumer with uh, uh, specifying the type. Here, like uh, on my screen, yeah, you see bytes. So definitely Kafka knows that how to deal with that byte. I can specify any object I want, and Kafka knows that, okay, I'm working with the cats, and this is the size for the cats. But uh, Kafka doesn't know what exactly uh, do you want, like, uh, do, you, uh, do you put to the header uh, as a header value. Okay, I see. Uh, and the, all the size restrictions apply here as well. So record size too large, it means that the overall record we produce needs to uh, to be less than the threshold configured on the broker, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and one more important thing that, uh, uh, remember I was talking about the partitions. So uh, Kafka allows multiple partitions. Partition is, uh, let's say, one topic can be split on the multiple partitions. So, and if you, if, for example, we have the uh, source whole 10 megabytes, but you put, and you, and we have like five partitions, and you put uh, five megabytes record in, in partition, in general, uh, we'll have uh, 25 megabytes. So the case that Kafka uh, uh, will not allow us uh, to do that, to send the records. So, uh, threshold are applicable to the entire topic partitions. So if you have only one partition and threshold, Kafka threshold, let's say 10 gigabytes, um, excuse me, megabytes, so we are free like to send 10 megabytes. But if we have threshold 10 megabytes, but two partitions, and each partition we are sending the file, 10 megabytes file, then the same. So Kafka calculates the summary of the uh, record partitions values of the Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? It looks like now. So we are done.